So let, let me frame it within Boeing a little bit because I, I think everyone has a view of what Boeing is. So, you know, first of all, Boeing is is um, almost a seventy a billion dollar company that's pretty much divided into two operating units. Boeing Commercial Aircraft, I think, which everybody understands, makes seven four seven triple seven. And then our government and defense and civil business is the other side of that. And that's Boeing Defense Space and Security. And so I'm on, I'm on that side. And in that business, we have three sub-operating units. Uh, an organization that makes military aircraft called Boeing Military Aircraft, one that does service and support called Global Support and Services, and then the business that I get to run, which is Boeing Network and Space Systems. And we're about $11 billion in sales, 20 some odd thousand people. We're in 41 states um, and about 12 to 15 uh, different, different countries. And uh, we're located at, uh, we have five major operating units. Yeah, go through that if you like. Uh, the information security systems is in Washington, D.C. Does border security, cyber, works with the intel community. Uh, a lot of the things that I think are becoming more and more important to the defense of the nation. Uh, I've got an organization called uh, Missile Defense Systems based in Huntsville, Alabama that does the ground-based mid-course defense, airborne laser lab, a lot of real high-tech programs associated with intercepting inbound intercontinental ballistic missiles and tactical missiles. It's a great organization. Um, I've got another organization called Space Exploration uh, based in Houston, Texas. Primary customers are NASA, Johnson Space Center, KSC, uh, Space Station Program, Space Shuttle Program, Ares 1, Ares 5, Altair, a lot of the manned space and uh, the we call space science type, uh, type programs. Uh, new organization out in Huntington Beach uh, called Network and Tactical Systems. Uh, the Army's large program, Brigade Combat Team Modernization, uh, a network-centric Army Brigade, does a lot of other work uh, related to digital networks, comms, radios, handheld, ground stations, satcoms, things like that. And then my last operating unit is in El Segundo, California, uh, Satellite Intelligence Systems, and that's really our satellite uh, design, development, manufacturing operations organization. And uh, we make a whole host of uh, satellites there, um, U.S. government, civil, uh, weather. We also do XM radio, direct TV, GPS. So, you know, we talked with uh, Michael Eggman about the topic. You know, last year was a lot about strategy. This year, we want to take strategy into execution. Um, and I really looked at the audience and the, the individuals who uh, come to this uh, terrific conference and a lot of uh, top tier MBAs, a lot of uh, Wharton students and Wharton alumni. And I really want to relate one, uh, uh, performance and execution around the development phase of a program. So I'm not going to talk about science and technology. I'm not going to talk about the production phase or the support or DML phase. I'm going to focus on development, which is primarily what I do in the network and space business. I'm going to make a premise that says development programs are difficult. That's why they're development. We're usually inventing something or creating something new. We're trying to meet an emerging requirement. We're frankly doing something that no one's uh, ever done before. We're kind of, if you will, go going into unknown space. So it is, it is predictable right, that cost schedule are, um, are going to be a challenge to manage. And I want to get that premise out because I think there's an expectation today that you can do development on a schedule. Um, and there are implications onto the contract type, uh, a lot of emphasis within DOD to move development to fixed price. I'm going to kind of suggest maybe that's not the right way to do development and how we share risk between the customer, the government, um, and the contractor. And then hopefully to make it interesting, uh, I've got sort of a, you know, top 10 signposts. So if you have a development program 
and you're trying to assess how your program is doing, I'm going to go through sort of 10 leading indicators that you've got some performance and execution problems on the program. And then the last couple of slides is really to talk about, okay, so you, you've got a development program, you've got some challenges in cost schedule or, or technical, uh, what can you do about it? And they're really, you know, you know, three major areas. It's kind of a people. Uh, oriented area. There's an area around managing uh, the baseline um, and uh, uh, working, if you will, uh, with the customer. And then the, the third area that I'll emphasize is, frankly, constant reviews and a lot of managing of detail and uh, paying attention to both the, the big and large aspects of the program, but all of the smaller things in a program that go together to create success. And so I've been doing this a, a long time. This is probably my fourth decade that I've been in the defense industry. Uh, I always like to say, well, oh boy, this is a nut. This is an inflection. But this year is the inflection point. And I think what I've come to understand is that every year is an inflection point. And from you know, you know, when I uh, was young, I was in high school. It was sort of a Cold War environment. Uh, and that created a, a certain threat which drove large platforms, what we always used to call a fold of gap scenario. And I think what has evolved now over time is, frankly, a change in the threat. So we, we went from a kind of a bipolar um, uh, a globe to where it's just this uh, multi-faceted uh, threat, very asymmetric. That has occurred at the same time within the United States, we've run into some very significant budget problems. So we had a, a, a trillion and a half budget deficit last year. We've got other priorities like uh, education and health care, which are going to drive the budget. And so what we're seeing in this shift, the shift this time, is away from some of these large marquee ACAT 1D programs into a lot smaller programs and a shift away from very large, higher risk, expensive platforms to smaller developments, uh, things like you know, cyber uh, uh, networks, some smaller satellites. And what it's done for us is it's created new markets and new adjacencies white space that we can address within the, the products and capabilities I have with the network space that we, we wouldn't have been able to address had it been just business as usual. So we actually find it a pretty exciting time. And where uh, in the past we might have spent uh, a considerable amount of our talent on program execution and production, we've now uh, in the process of shifting that talent into uh, market identification and market development and writing proposals and helping to shape business opportunities so that we can continue to win business and grow. So we, we, we are, we've created sort of a new word in this, uh, in this decade called cyber. Right, and, and you know, cyber is really speaks to the infrastructure of computers and networks and applications that allow us to move information. Uh, and with the proliferation, and frankly our, our society now is more and more dependent upon the networks and the access right, that that gives us all the information. Right, anytime uh, you have a growth in a technology like that, you also open up vulnerabilities vulnerabilities to threat, people who don't share your ideals, people who would like to attack the United States, who would like to attack you know, the countries that we associate with. And because of the dependence on this cyber infrastructure, we are seeing a, a proliferation of attacks both from nation states, from non-government organizations, and frankly from casual hackers. Uh, so as we have developed these networks, we've also developed a suite of defenses. And uh, you know, at, at Boeing, we have a very large proprietary network that we use just to operate the business of Boeing. You know, we have over 500,000 IP addresses. Uh, we have multiple terabytes of data. Uh, we are as much a target for Boeing right, uh, as the Department of Defense. 
So we all have had to create defenses, and there's a whole suite of things that we've done between firewalls and fast switching, uh, packet inspection, and a lot of techniques that we use internally to protect our network, and then we have productized these and then uh, moved them out into our customer base where we do uh, network management for various customers. Your specific question, and, and you picked out a couple threats, and I think those are, are well known. You know, there was a cyber attack uh, around the Russian invasion of Georgia. I think that one is, has been uh, well known. There have been some on Wall Street relative to, to banking. I think that those have also been well known. And your answer was, well, your question was sort of absolute. Can we ever 100% uh, protect the network? And, and I would tell you that the cyber threat feels more like the IED threat which is uh, given any defined threat, we can build a counter to that threat. So if, if we know that they're gonna you know, hack in through a firewall using a certain techniques, it's easy to build a, a firewall blocker that stops that threat, right? And we do that and, and frankly, our cyber defenses is a very active, very responsive uh, type of defense. But what we're seeing is this very adaptive, responsive, reactive threat. And I would describe what's going on now is it's a continuum where we've, we strive to create a balance where we went on the balance side. So we have to forever be staying one step ahead of the threat, creating new defenses, new firewalls, uh, new visibility tools into the network because fixing today's threat's not gonna be good enough. And the reaction time that we're seeing uh, in that global threat is hours and days and weeks. And that's exciting for us because we get to hire really smart college graduates in computer science and, and uh, 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 computer engineering, and we bring them into Boeing, we work with customers, they get to do real exciting work on, on an hourly, daily, weekly basis, their, you know, their uh, excitement about coming to work for us uh, is real high, and then we get to protect the, the networks of the nations. So uh, never an absolute. Uh, we have the technology and the capability, though, to, to defend the cyberspace that we need as a country to operate, um, but uh, we will always need to be staying ahead of the threat.